What is going on guys? Thank you so very much for stopping by the channel today. I got a little bit of extra for you. It is October 12th, 2021. I am JD from New York and this is Off The Script. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. If you guys missed any of the contents on the channel in the last week, go and check the homepage. Everything you need is linked right there and make sure you guys hit that thumbs up let's try for 1000 likes on today's ots extra aj styles and omas they were about to be broken up in the wwe draft with a slew of other tag teams that wwe has broken up this year via the draft but there was one main event level talent in WWE on Monday Night Raw that stepped forward and said, I think this is a bad idea. They listened to said talents, and WWE is now keeping AJ Styles and Omos together on Monday Night Raw. Wrestle votes reported on Monday afternoon that there were plans in place to split up AJ Styles and Omos until people of power spoke up and expressed how they didn't think Omos was ready to be a single star. This nixed the plans of breaking up the tag team on Monday night. Now, when the draft, Styles and Omos stayed on Raw. Omos first started to appear on the main roster with the Raw Underground segments. If you guys remember, he was the doorman for Shane McMahon. And last October, WWE paired him with the former WWE champion in AJ Styles. They went on to become the Raw Tag Team Champions, ultimately to drop said titles to both Randy Orton and Matt Riddle. Some of the teams did get split up in WWE. They include Veer, Shanky, and Jinder Mahal. Veer stayed on Raw. Jinder and Shanky went to SmackDown. Veer ultimately will be unemployed in the next several months. I find WWE in a position where they will not be pushing Veer on Monday Night Raw. Natalia and Tamina, they split after wasting all of our times as the women's tag team champions ultimately to become Nothing more than losers. Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox, they were split. I think this is a good move. Both women are singles wrestlers. So I'm glad they're getting an opportunity to shine. Even though WWE wasted our time with them as they beat the former tag team champions in Natalia and Tamina and never got a tag team championship opportunity in WWE. Mason T-Bar, they were split up. This is a good move. Hopefully T-Bar kind of reverts back to being Dijakovic. I can only hope. And there were plans for WWE to split up the Street Profits, but those plans were nixed. And Angelo Dawkins is probably on his hands and knees thanking the wrestling gods because if that was the case, more than likely he would have drowned in a sea of misery in the singles division in WWE, ultimately himself getting released in the next several months because we all know what WWE thinks of tag teams like the Street Profits. They think one is a singles guy and then they just kind of cast the other guy off. They genetti him, per se. And we all know Montez Ford is going to go on to do big things as a single. It's just a wait-and-see game. Now, with AJ Styles and Omas, this one main event level talent that WrestleVotes is tweeting out that stepped forward and said something about Omas not being ready for a singles role. I am not really in a position to say who it is. I don't have any inside sources. I don't have any any backstage news of any kind, but I'm going to make a logical guess here, and I'm going to say it's probably Randy Orton because he's the only other main event level guy on that show that has worked extensively with both AJ and Omos for the Raw Tag Team titles. I think Randy Orton stepped forward, and if somebody like Randy Orton is stepping forward in something like this or in regards to something like this, I do think that you're supposed to take his opinion to be serious. Randy Orton has been in... God knows what, literally everything. He's seen people come and go. He's got an eye for talent, I'm sure. He is an absolute leader in that locker room. I don't have any inside sources, but I think this is Randy Orton stepping forward and doing the deed here and being honest with management, and they absolutely should listen when Randy Orton speaks. Now, the only thing that I don't get, and I agree with this, Omos is nowhere, and I mean absolutely not even in the fucking coffee shop 
ordering a cup of coffee, let alone sitting down and having a cup of coffee. This guy is not even there yet, man. He is standing in line on a fucking Sunday morning at Starbucks, and he ain't going nowhere for the next 20 minutes at all getting a fucking coffee, man. You guys uh, you guys know how bu busy the coffee shops are, especially in New York City. Omos is not anywhere ready to being a single star in WWE. But, but my, my only... My only problem here is why does AJ Styles need to be taken down a peg or four by teaming with Omas? Why do we need to keep them specifically in the tag team division? Why does AJ Styles specifically have to be a tag team wrestler with a singles match thrown about with a Riddle or a Randy Orton? That, that's not what I think AJ Styles should be doing. I don't think that's what AJ Styles really wants to be doing. I don't know. I don't know AJ personally, but I don't think he wants to do the same thing week in and week out on Monday Night Raw with really nothing new or refreshing about it. But why does AJ have to suffer? Why can't AJ still team with Omos while also being in the main event picture for the WWE Championship at the same time? Meanwhile, Omos would really feed off of everything AJ is doing on his own in the main event scene. He would look better for it because AJ is being elevated Right now, AJ isn't really doing anything. His value on Monday Night Raw is that of AJ Styles because we all know how great he is, but he hasn't really done much of anything to elevate his stock at all. And I don't think the pairing is even making Omos look good or stand out on his own. So what good is this? And how good is this working out for Omos? If AJ was a singles guy competing for the WWE Championship like we all know he should be, then it might actually be a, bit, a little bit better off for Omas. That's where AJ Styles needs to be. There's no reason why he needs to be stuck in a fucking tag team doing tag team things and specifically doing only that. Move AJ Styles to the main event scene because after the draft, Monday Night Raw has a solid main event scene. Seth Rollins, Big E, Finn Balor, Edge. You throw AJ Styles in there, Damian Priest is going to be moving up there. Karrion Cross is going to be moving up there, hopefully. Keith Lee hopefully moving up there. If WWE wants to have a great main event scene on Monday night, they certainly have the fucking tools to give you that. So move AJ up there. He's a heel. Biggie versus AJ. I'll buy into that. AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins. I'd buy into that. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. I'd buy into that. AJ Styles versus Edge. I'd buy into that. That's a WrestleMania caliber match right there. So why aren't we moving AJ Styles up to the main event scene challenging for the WWE Championship when you got all these dream matches and potential great fresh new matchups waiting for him? Meanwhile, Omos can feed off of him while he's doing that. Why does he got to stay stuck in a tag team? Then I got geeks online telling me, oh, AJ doesn't want the WWE Championship. He said it himself. He doesn't want to be in the WWE title picture. How the fuck do you know? Like the guy can't change his opinion on where he wants to be and what he wants to do? Because that's exactly where I put him. Even if you don't want to give him the championship, there's no reason why he can't break out on his own and be a singles guy first and a tag team guy second. So that's what I would do with AJ Styles. Omos, in my honest opinion, will never be ready for a singles role in WWE. Never. I don't find any interest in Omos at all, nor do I want to see him compete at a higher level. I don't care about Omos, and I don't think he will ever be ready. Speaking of Big E, his next challenge for the WWE title might have been revealed due to recent WWE house shows. While house shows are often viewed as throwaway shows, they do sometimes serve as a way for WWE to test things out, try things out before they actually put it on television, including opponent combinations for future TV matches and feuds. With that said, Big E defended the title this past weekend in Bakersfield, California, against Seth Rollins. So WWE could be teasing the waters for a potential Biggie versus Seth Rollins feud for the WWE title. And I mentioned this in the build to WrestleMania, and you OGs know that I've mentioned this. This would have been my WrestleMania match if Big E and Rollins weren't doing what they were doing on the show already back in April. I would have absolutely booked Big E versus Seth Rollins, being that they were both on the SmackDown brand, and you want to really build up Big E as a singles guy. I thought that would have been a great feud for Big E and Seth Rollins at the time going into WrestleMania. And now here we are going into October, going into November, December, and the winter fall months. 
Now we're talking about Biggie and Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw for the WWE title, being that Rollins is now moved to Monday nights. So what I thought then, I'm absolutely in agreement agreement with now because I think both guys are doing probably the best work of their entire calendar year. Rollins is killing it as a heel. Big E has always been very good at what he's done. And it seems like Big E's taking on more of a serious role as well as the WWE champion. I am okay with that. And if WWE is testing the waters to see what they do in the ring and how well they, they gel and what type of work that these guys do together, I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. Rollins is going to finish up his feud with Edge at Crown Jewel. LSL Big E is defending the WWE title at Crown Jewel against Drew McIntyre. This is all on October 21st. I am for that. I really am all for that. And I think Rollins could be a great foil for Big E, especially with the heel work that he's been doing right now with Edge. If he moves over to Monday Night Raw and does that with Big E, you're not going to get a single complaint out of me. Nick Gage. Not a big Nick Gage guy. But Nick Gage, I know the rabid fan base that he has, GCW has. Nick Gage caused a huge stir when he showed up on AEW Dynamite. If you guys remember, Domino's Pizza reportedly had a problem with the pizza cutter spot that he had against Matt Cardona. And Nick Mondo recently shed some light on Nick Gage's future plans while speaking to Wrestling Inc., although he did not provide any timetable or whether Gage will do any more deathmatch wrestling for AEW. An AEW return is very likely for Nick Gage. Now, this hardcore style is not really all that common in AEW. It is a common thing in GCW. But the doors could be open for Nick Gage to do something like this one more time for AEW. Nick Mondo says, and I quote, when we shot in the prison, that was just two days before he faced Jericho. So I got to kind of chat with him leading up to that. He was calm. He was cool about it. Saw it as a real opportunity. And it was for him. I don't know this, but I believe they may be doing something a bit more with the hardcore stuff on Rampage. So maybe you'll see Gage again. I don't know, but I do believe that they're going to do some more of that. And I think all of us are just so happy to see him get this opportunity. End quote. Gage had a ton of momentum already in GCW. He was their GCW world champion. Then Dark Side of the Ring received a lot of attention with Nick Gage and the episode they premiered with Nick Gage and his story and getting arrested and what he's like off of the wrestling scene. He's still the face of GCW still and will forever be, depending on who you ask, really. But one of the things that you could be sure of is that Gage is definitely going to be intertwined with some AEW stuff because John Moxley is the GCW champion. John Moxley just recently beat Nick Gage at the show that they had in Atlantic City on Saturday night. And GCW is obviously run by Joey Janela and Brett Lauder- Lauderdale. And Joey Janela is a part of the AEW roster. So there's something going on there. AEW talent is more than likely to work a GCW show. We had Thunder Rosa show up on Saturday night. We had Leo Rush show up on Saturday night. GCW is the place to be right now, man. They are probably... If you are to rate pro wrestling companies here in the United States, it's WWE, AEW. And I would absolutely say with the momentum that they've garnered the last couple of months, I would say GCW is a solid number three promotion in the United States with Impact being number four and Ring of Honor being number five. And I don't know if you guys agree with that, but with the momentum they've garnered over the last couple of months, I mean, it's very difficult not to really buy into that. John Moxley's their world champion. That's a great move. So with Moxley and Gage, they got a history. We can absolutely see Moxley and Gage on AEW television. I don't know how likely that is. I don't know if Tony Khan wants that on his television show. I don't really care for it. I don't really consider deathmatch wrestling wrestling. It's more of a circus to me. But GCW is becoming a little bit more watchable because it has AEW influence behind it. Major AEW stars and AEW storylines are actually kind of circulating in the GCW landscape. And that's going to make it more watchable than than most promotions because AEW is the number two. So Nick Gage and John Moxley, they may be doing something on AEW television. Nick Gage may be going back to AEW. 
uh, for a small stint. But if he was, who else is he going to work with? There really isn't anybody else outside John Moxley. So more than likely, it will be Moxley. But if he comes back, I'll take it in small spurts. Like I said, not a big fan. But if he does come back, I'm the type of guy that would be open to that as long as w, uh, AEW doesn't really get carried away and show that type of deathmatch scene and deathmatch wrestling on their shows uh, frequently. So we'll see what happens with Nick Gage. He's possibly on his way back to AEW if Nick Mondo is to be believed. And Brian Danielson, he revealed the real reason why he retired from WWE. If you guys remembered, Daniel Bryan was out for four years. And I don't want to put on my conspiracy cap, but I said it then, and I've said it every single time this particular story was brought up. WWE purposely kept Bryan off of television because of the huge agenda to push Roman Reigns as the face of the company. They wanted nothing more in this world than to get Roman Reigns over. And Bryan, as long as he was an active performer on the same roster as Reigns, that was never going to happen. So with Bryan out and forced to retire, Roman Reigns had the landscape all to himself and still failed because WWE thinks their fans are fucking stupid. Most of them are. But the smart people out there who saw what was going on, they didn't buy into what WWE was selling with Roman Reigns. Now we got the real story behind why Bryan retired from WWE. Danielson had retired in 2016 due to injuries he suffered from multiple concussions. This led him to experiencing seizures and a brain lesion. He was then unexpectedly cleared by doctors in 2018 and made his return to the ring. Danielson has now revealed that he hid some stuff from WWE about his health before he was forced to retire. Speaking to WDEL, he revealed what actually took place. And I quote, I legitimately thought I was healthy and still think I am healthy. One of the reasons I was forced to retire was not because of the concussions, but because I lied about my health issues. You have to understand from WWE's point of view, I had been wrestling for them for six years, but then all of a sudden they opened up this Pandora's box about lying about my medical history, and now they think we can't trust him. A lot of that was building the trust back, but they were also legitimately looking after my health. I was going to see doctor after doctor after doctor and doing everything that I could to improve brain function to show above and beyond that my brain was healthy. End quote. So what I'm reading here is not really confirmation about where my mind is thinking about this, but it is all but kind of leading in that direction. WWE, they didn't keep Brian off of television because he was hurt. They retired somebody who was able to go. They retired somebody that was able to go and knew had an, a major influence over the audience and a major influence that was going to stifle what their agenda was. And that was the Roman Reigns agenda as a babyface. And nobody wanted him as the babyface, the number one face of the company. They wanted Brian in that moment. So what I'm reading here is WWE did not force Brian to retire for injuries. They forced him to retire so they, they could evaluate him and make sure he was okay when he felt he was okay, when he knew he was okay. They forced to retire him because he lied about his past medical history? So you kept a major A-plus player off of your television because he lied about his medical history when he says he was fully healthy? I don't understand that. So why did they keep him off television? WWE now concerned about somebody lying about their medical history? That doesn't have anything to do with what he's doing now and he feels like he's healthy. He went to go see doctors. He knows he's healthy. You kept him off television for lying about what he did in the past? For what? Why would you do that to him? Why would you do that to the show and the promotion? 
If Roman Reigns wasn't a thing, if Roman Reigns wasn't being pushed the way that he was, I don't think Brian would have been forced to sit out for the years he sat out. I don't think that would have been an issue. But WWE seemingly found some sort of fucking excuse and some loophole to keep him off television while they did what they needed to do with Reigns, and it still failed. Just like I thought all those years ago, if Brian was to leave WWE, the one person that would get CM Punk back in pro wrestling is Brian Danielson. And where are we now? Brian signed, Punk signed, and now they're both in the same promotion in AEW. And they're changing the world one week at a time. Now, you guys may think it's a little far-fetched. You guys may think it's a little ridiculous. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to stick to my guns on this one, man. I don't think Brian was really hurt when he said he was hurt. I honestly think WWE kept him out on purpose while they tried to push the Roman Reigns agenda and they wanted him to be the face of the company and they knew with Brian there, it was never going to happen the way that they want. And funny enough, it never really worked out the way WWE wanted because Roman Reigns was a complete failure as a babyface. And if they only listened to everybody saying the same thing about where we are now with Roman Reigns and turned him heel when they should have, WWE probably would have the biggest baby face in the entire pro wrestling world in Roman Reigns right now. Guys, I'm about to get out of here. Thank you so very much for joining me on this episode of OTS Extra. I will have more extras throughout the week. I got some major news about the schedule coming up this week. There may be a little bit of a bump in the road as far as the usual content later on in the week, but I will fill you guys in on social media. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. Hit that thumbs up. Let's try for a thousand likes on today's video. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Go check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel. And I'll see you guys right back here for NXT tonight. My boy, Tony D'Angelo. Hopefully we see more Tony D'Angelo on NXT. And we got that big match with Tommaso Ciampa and Joe Gacy. I will be here live in the venue covering NXT tonight. I'll see you guys tonight for NXT. Have a great Tuesday, and I'll be right back here on YouTube live tonight for NXT.